and welcome back to the Angry Teacher channel. I'm Richard Williams, the Angry Teacher. If it's your first time here, peruse the channel, check out the playlist, see which ones speak to you, give me comments, give me concerns. Um, just hang out, watch some videos and get into the channel. If you've been here before, you know I love y'all. Thanks for the love, thanks for the comments. Let's get into the video. Now, I did a video on teaching poetry and a couple of um, people have asked me to do one on short stories. And I guess I'm gonna do that today. And then I'm probably gonna do one about how I teach novels and all that stuff later, because that's gonna take a lot more time or dramas. But let's do short stories today. It's gonna kind of mirror the, the poetry one that I did. So check that out. And then we're just gonna learn how to teach short stories. I'm not even sure which one I'm gonna do yet, but you'll see in the video. So, let's get into it. Now, we're going to be, I'm so excited, we're gonna be talking about um, how to teach short stories. I've done a video on tone, I've done a video on poetry. Did I do a video on poetry? I think I did a video on poetry. Or I will do a video on poetry. I could have sworn I did, but whatever. With that said, um, this is on short stories and it's not very complex, but it's just something I felt I needed to show. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> All right, so the short story I'm gonna be using is Nella Larson Sanctuary. It's a very good um, short story, especially for pur this purpose. I think it's only like three pages, so it's easy to maneuver away from the language. It's um, in the deep south and, and when, when um, the still some form of oppression, obviously. And so the, the language that the freed blacks were using was very hard for the kids to navigate to some extent, but they'll get through it, you'll get through it with them. All right, so in any case, um, so this is how I normally do it. I have, you know, the opening slide and it's all pretty and whatever, and then we get right into the LAP chart. And, you know, it's, I used to do it in class, in person, it was, you know, just a chart we put on the board and then I realized that in order for me to get kids to participate, this is what I have to do. And especially during the pandemic when they're at home, I'm not sure what they're doing. They're not sure what they're doing. I'm not sure if they're paying attention. This is how I can guarantee that you're participating. So I've deemed it and called it the Literary Analysis and Participation Chart, which is affectionately known by the kids as LAPS. So whenever I say, guys, we're making a LAP chart, they know exactly it what it is. Laps. So whenever I say, guys, we're making a LAP chart, they know exactly what it is because this is how you get your participation grade for the day. With that said, so we've, this is how it would play out in my class. We would read the short story, possibly once or twice together, or in groups or by themselves. Normally, you know, like poetry, because it's shorter. This one's not too long, so I'd have them probably read it by themselves, then read it as a class, and then we will break it down. So we do the literary devices. And, you know, I'd ask them different things. They shout it out. They'll tell me what they're doing. And then I just put it on the board or they would fill it out, you know, whatever they find in the story. Told you what the story was about but there is a young lady who well an old lady i guess she was at home by herself until a young man who was trying to escape the white lawmakers of the time of the time they she and he ended up in her house and he started to um hide and then she she saw him he came to her he's like you know ma'am um, I know, you know, this is bad for me, but could you hide me for a minute because they're chasing me? And so she's like, what you done did now? And he tells her that he shot a man. 
He didn't know who it was because it was dark. He was just trying to escape. And so he chose her house because it was in between two different places and Nella Larson does a good job of describing that and this was the closest that he could get to. And so she's like, okay, fine, go into my room and hide in it under my, my what, what is it she said? I just think sil silk satin sheets or, or feather down feather bed or whatever. So it's so something, I love her use of contrasts. Oh, let me put that down before I forget. She uses contrasts a lot in this um, story. Um, and so they, he's there hiding in the, in the room. And then the cops come, uh, or the lawman comes, and they have a conversation, and she doesn't give him up. This black guy who came to her house, and she's black, by the way. The black guy came to, came to her house to hide, and she doesn't give him up. Come to find out that through the conversation with the, law ma the lawman, the man who was shot by that same black guy was her son. It was a whole epiphany that she had right there. Even the... the <laughs> as the the guy in the room the the young man that she was hiding once he heard he has an epiphany to him like oh my god i killed her son and she's hiding me then the cop leaves the lawmaker leaves or lawman leaves and then afterwards it is she comes into the room he apologizes like crazy and says you know ma'am i didn't know blah 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 and she's like you better thank your jesus that you got this black face and then it ends and then the kids are like, oh my God, whatever, blah, 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 if I were her. It's a cool story. You, should, you guys should check it out. All right, so anyway, back to the chart. My bad. I, I digress a little bit. Back to the chart. So there are contrasts, the style. Randomly putting stuff in just so we can have a, a, a an idea of how to do the chart. Not necessarily, we're not necessarily talking about the, the short story itself, but we're talking about the chart. Um, so Annie Poole's house. Annie's bed, Jim Hammer, he's the guy who she was hiding, Annie is also a symbol, and Bill Lambs, who is the lawman. Motifs, they talked about contrast, color, movement, and let me leave that alone for now. And I'm just quickly going through it. I didn't want to make the video too long, so that's where we are. Uh, it is um, all right. So so far, this is what we have on the first slide of the chart: the literary devices. So we, you know, we go through as a class and we discuss the different literary device short story. Now, remember, this has already been. Um, We've read it, so you know they're breaking it apart now. So, and this process takes about maybe two class periods to properly flesh it out. Uh, the motifs in my on my TPT store. I have a TPT store, the Angry Teacher. Check it out and um, download the video that shows you what motifs, popular motifs, there are, and how to um, complete the charts for the different types of genres that we read in English or just that we read in general because you can use them for government and um, US history, all that good stuff, any form of documents, the, the chart is, is f I show you how to do it on my um, TPT store, okay, so check it out. In any case, let's get back to the chart. The second slide, because it's a short story, and this is the slide that's different from the poetry because poetry, yes, some do have it, but it's not the focus of the work. In short stories, that's the focus of the work. Characters. We have to have characters. And so for character one, and there are three characters that we know about. There is four, the, the son who dies, um, Obadiah, but you know, he doesn't do much. He's just a, a, the catalyst for Jim ending up in her house. And that's an important role, to be honest. But we just uh, leave him there. But we just uh, leave him there. You know, we won't do him for this purpose. You can do whatever you want to do in your class. So Annie Poole, who is uh, was the mother um, of the of Obadiah, we look for adjectives, traits, and actions for the short story. So let's say Annie, she was kind, um, 
loving. She loves her people because you've just found out a young man killed your son and you're still protecting him. Um, so we'll just use that for now, just for purposes of the video and not that I don't want the video to be 20, 30 minutes. Okay. Um, character two is Jim Hammer, the, the guy she was hiding. All right, so he was scared. You know, kids would shout that out. He was regretful because he didn't know who he, who he had shot. And then we have Lounge that I'm not going to get into right now. Once again, don't want the video to be too long. All right, and then every short story has to have conflict. So we have to discuss the conflict. The conflict was there was a young man running from the law and ended up at uh, Annie Poole's house. So, uh, man tries to escape. Annie has a decision to make. A very important decision. And, you know, once we've discussed different types of conflict, we can bring that up. Is it man versus man or man versus self? And it's a little bit of both. So um, also man versus society. <clears throat> and it depends on, you know, the, uh, the work, obviously, and it's up to you. And it depends on how far the kids are. Okay, so how others also editable, it's manipulable. <laughs> You can change what you want to for the purposes of the story. So we can take stuff out, but we can leave stuff in. Annie Poole was known for her generosity, her kindness to the community. And so Jim knew to run to her house or he could have, he could stop there. Had it been anybody else, he'd probably keep running or find some place else to go. So we can add all that stuff in as we go through it. Important events, lines and quotes. There would be parts where um, the hiding would be important. The questioning would be important when the the lawman comes into the story and her epiphany when she finds out her son was shot <clears throat> that's important those are important things and these are all important for later the kids will realize so things he says things she says um she says something like uh thank um she says something like uh Thank your Jesus for your black face. And then, you know, something you can use, the details you can use for the uh, essay when, or, or the writing portion of the assignment. The assignment. Uh, Jim says he shot a man dead. Oh, or he shot a man, Miss Poole. And then we kind of, you know, ask them, okay, guys, you got it? You good? And for the most part, they say yes. And then they have that, they have that in their notes. And one, th one thing I like about this, and you'll check it out in my video on TPT, is that it's very across the board. It, it's, it's all the same. They don't have to worry about, they know that the chart is going to look a certain way and everything is going to have the same thing. It's going to be streamlined. The only thing that changes is the information I put in. So there's no um, anxiety anymore. They understand that my chart, my uh, all poems, we need to look at this, these things. All short stories, we need to look at these things. The only thing that changes is the content. And after all of that, to make sure that they've completely understood, if I don't have a project or an activity where they're moving around or, um, you know, using their learning modalities, their, their preferred learning modalities. What I do is I have them have a writing assignment and I pose different questions based on the reading, based on the, or breaking it apart and ripping it to shreds and coming up with something. Then the questions always, because they always relate to that, the kids usually do a better job because now they know where to find the information, how to break it down. It's already been broken down as a class or as a group, or even if they do it by themselves, they already know what they're doing. So, that's all the time I have today for how to teach short stories. The chart has made life a lot easier. I suggest you check it out. Thanks for coming to class today. As usual, let's go out there and be great.
hey, let's just go out there and teach. <laughs>